The major method for guitar theory and improvisation is a system to learn music theory and the scales one needs to know to improvise on the neck of the guitar. It's called the major method because it relates most of the scales back to the major scale. The reason why it does this is that on the guitar, in order to learn one simple major scale on the entire neck of the guitar, you have to learn seven different patterns across the neck and then tie it together to be one huge pattern. Most of these other scales that you really need to know are very similar to the major scale. So the major method relates all of these scales back to the shapes of the major scale that you initially learned, thereby cutting down a bunch of the work that it takes to learn these scales. The major scale has seven different notes to it. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to the next octave. You can play a major scale on each string if you wanted to play back down again. You can do it on all the strings, but playing up and down each string is cumbersome, so we're going to learn it across the neck. Um, now because there are seven different notes to the major scale, and you want to know where you are on the entire neck, not just on one little section, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it up into sections that overlap on top of each other. So no matter where your hand is on the neck of the guitar, you can throw your hand anywhere and you're going to be able to play. You don't have to shift and say, oh, I don't know this area quite as well. Um, so I'm going to give you seven different patterns that come across the neck of the guitar. Each pattern will assign a number. And the number is going to come from whatever scale degree your first finger starts with. So if we're in the key of G, and I'll pick the key of G because it's a common key for guitar. It's a good key for guitar. If you start on the G, you're in pattern one. If you start on the A, that's the second pitch of the scale, so now you're in pattern two. If you start on the B, the third pitch from the scale, you're in pattern three, and so on. Um, and what we'll do is, we're gonna start on the lowest pattern that you can play on the neck of the guitar without using open strings. Remember, when you're improvising, when you're soloing, you're not always gonna start on the first pitch of the scale. You're going to start anywhere on the neck. So we're going to just start on the lowest pattern you can play on the neck of the guitar without using open strings in the key of G major. Inside the Major Method Volume 1 book, you have diagrams of all the different scales that you'll need to know. They're set up a bit like tablature, so the headstock is on the left, the low E string is on the bottom, and the high E string is on the top. The numbers down below the pattern are your left hand finger numbers. So your first finger takes care of all the notes here on the second fret. Your second finger takes care of the notes on the third fret. The third finger takes care of these two notes on the fourth fret. And your fourth finger takes care of these notes down on the fifth fret. When you play this scale, you'll be playing from left to right. So it's your first finger, second finger, and fourth finger on the low E string. Then you go to the A string, and you play your first finger, your second finger, and your little finger, your fourth finger. The next string, you play your first finger, your third finger, and your fourth finger. Same thing for the next string, first finger, third, and fourth. The next string is only your second finger and your fourth finger. There's no first finger on this string. The last string, the high E string, you play your first finger, second finger, and fourth finger. Then you come back from your fourth finger to your second to your first, fourth finger to your second finger, four, three, one, four, three, one, Four, two, one, four, two, one. So you're starting on the seventh scale degree. You go to the first scale degree, the second scale degree, the third, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, back to the first. For right now, you can ignore these numbers inside the pattern. Just focus on the shapes that your finger have, fingers have to play in order to get through the scale. This is pattern seven of the G major scale because you're starting on the seventh pitch. You're going to come across the neck. The low E string is one, two, four. Now these numbers that I'm using again are your four fingers of your left hand. So your first finger, your second finger, you don't play your third, you play your fourth. That pattern is the same for the next string. One, two, four. The next string is a little different. It's one, three, four. The next string is also one, three, four. B string, the second string is just 2-4. There's no 1 on this one. So it's just 2-4, and the last string is 1-2-4. So what you have here is a pattern that goes 1-2-4, 1-2-4. Four, four. 
one three four one three four just two four and one two four when you play this pattern you want to play it across the neck and back remember when you solo you're not always going to be playing from the low note to the high note you're going to be dancing all over the neck so you want to make sure that you can play it forwards and backwards if you're not um, too comfortable with a pick start with just down strokes with the pick on all these notes so again you're, you'll be plucking down 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 for each for each note just down 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 as you get comfortable with it you can start using alternate picking which is alternating the picking down and up. Uh, make sure that you continue the alternate picking no matter whether you're changing strings or not. So you'd be playing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And you don't have to repeat the top note. Uh, when you're soloing and you're changing direction, you may or may not repeat that top note. So just don't repeat it when you're ru running the scales. Just play it straight through. Also keep in mind that as you're changing to the next string, make sure you're not broadcasting how difficult it is to play. So you're not playing next string, next string. You get the idea. So just make it flow smoothly. That's pattern seven. We're going to move through the other patterns a little more quickly now. In pattern one, you're going to have a first finger stretch. Now the idea here in this set of fingerings is to try to stretch as little as possible uh, for your left hand. Make it as easy as possible for your left hand. So your fingers essentially are playing one finger per fret all the way across the neck and all the way back. The only thing that's going to happen is occasionally the first finger is going to stretch out. Now right now it might be really awkward to stretch out so you might have to shift your hand. If you do make sure that when you shift back your second finger is on the right fret. Uh, so your basic hand position is going to be your first finger on the fourth fret of the guitar. Now you're not going to play that note because that note's not in the key of G, but that's where your first finger is. And each finger afterwards is one finger per fret. So this pattern, your first finger stretches out to the third fret. Your second finger is on the fifth fret, which is a dot on most guitars. Your little finger is on the seventh fret. So that's a stretch one and then two, four. Same thing on the next string, stretch one, two, four then regular one, two, four on the next string. So your one comes back in to the fourth fret. So it's, now it's one, regular one, two, four. Same thing on the next string, one, two, four. The next string is just two, four. There's no one. And the last string you come back to stretch one, two, four. Then of course you come back. Four, two, one, four, two, one. Four two stretch one, four two stretch one. Now there are a couple things to note here. Um, one of them is that in pattern seven, when you play pattern seven, a bunch of these notes, almost two thirds of those notes, are also in pattern one. So these patterns dovetail over each other. Uh, so, like, if you know the pentatonic scale or the blues scale, a lot, of, a lot of those patterns sort of butt up against each other, like a jigsaw puzzle. With the major scales, they cross sort of cross thatch into each other. So some of these notes are from the other pattern as well. Um, so this is pattern one. Again, you have a first finger stretch, first finger stretch, regular, regular, then just two, four, and stretch one. Another thing to note about pattern one, your second finger and your little finger stay straight down. They play, the second finger stays on the fifth fret all the way across the neck. The little finger stays on the seventh fret all the way across the neck. Your third finger isn't used at all. So keep in mind what those fingerings are as you start to play to make sure that your hand is in position. And then come on back. That's pattern one. Pattern two, your first finger's on the fifth fret. Here, your first finger is gonna play straight down the fifth fret. Your second finger isn't gonna be used at all. Your third finger is gonna come straight down the seventh fret. And your little finger is gonna be on the eighth fret and it's gonna stretch out for a couple of notes as well. So your first finger's on the fifth fret. This is pattern two of the G major scale. It's also the E natural minor scale. So your first finger's on the fifth fret, and your fingerings are gonna be one, three, four. Now the next string is one, three, stretch four. The next string, one, three, stretch four. And again, 
again, you don't need to leave your hand in position like this. You could play one, three, and shift if it hurts too much. Don't stress your left hand. Come back, but make sure your first finger comes back to the fifth fret. Next string is just one, three. The last two strings are identical. They're one, three, four, one, three, four. Then come on back. Just three, one. Stretch four and try to make sure your third finger's on the seventh fret. Coming back, stretch four, three, one, and then regular four, three, one. Now let's go on to the pattern three. Pattern three has your first finger on the seventh fret of the guitar. This pattern has no finger stretches. So we're gonna come straight across one finger per fret. So your first finger's on the seventh fret again, and you're gonna be playing one, two, four, then one, three, four. Then one, three, four again. Then one, three. Then one, two, four the rest of the way. So it's one, two, four, one, two, four. Come on back. So it's four, two, one, four, two, one, just three, one, four, three, one, four, three, one, and four, two, one. It's on the seventh fret. So we just did pattern three. We're about to do pattern four. Pattern four starts with your first finger, the basic hand position, your first finger is on the ninth fret, and it's one finger per fret. However, this one has a first finger stretch, so your first finger is gonna stretch out to the eighth fret here. So this is pattern four of G major, or E natural minor, and your first finger is stretching out to the eighth fret, your second finger is on the tenth fret, your little finger is on the twelfth fret. The next string, your first finger comes into regular one, two, four. Same thing on the next string. Next string is one, three, four. The next string after that is just two, four. And then you're back to stretch one, two, four. And then of course come back. Four, two, stretch one. Four, two. Four, three, one. Four, two, one. Four, two, one. Four, two, stretch one. And that's pattern four. Pattern five is up on the 10th fret. Now for a lot of guitar players, if you are playing an acoustic guitar that doesn't have a cutaway like this guitar here, um, then it becomes very difficult. You start to have to kind of reach up. You can hike your guitar up and reach around the neck of the guitar to play it, uh, but make sure you don't stress your wrist too much when you do these. If you're playing an electric guitar, chances are you're not gonna have a problem with this one. So this is one where you really have a lot of first finger stretches. Uh, your basic hand position is where your first finger is on the 11th fret, and it's one finger per fret. Then what's going to happen is your first finger stretches out to be on the 10th fret. So it's like that. Uh, so again, your second finger is going to be on the double dots on the 12th fret that comes straight across the neck. So it's stretch one, two, four. This is pattern five now. Stretch one, two, four on the next string as well. Stretch one, two, four on the next string then regular one, two, four on the next string. Now just two, three, there's no one on this next string, just two and three. Not two, four, but two and three. Stretch one, two, four on the last one. Stretch one, two, and then the little finger. Then you come back, four, two, stretch one. Just two, three, or three, two, coming back. Then four, two, one, regular. Four, two, stretch one. Same thing, same thing. So there are a lot of finger stretches in pattern five. Pattern six, and we're almost through, the, through all seven patterns, because remember, we started with pattern seven. So we did seven, one, two, three, four, we just did five. Pattern six would start on the double dots. This is on the 12th fret. Uh, again, this is gonna be difficult for some people who are the playing acoustic guitars without a cutaway. Either reach around the neck or play it down somewhere else on the neck just to kind of get your fingers used to this set of shapes. Uh, so your first finger's on the double dots, the 12th fret, and you're going to come across the neck playing 1-3-4, one, 1-3-4, three, 1-3-stretch four, one, three, four, one, three, just 1-3, then 1-2-4, four, and 1-3-4, four, then come on back. So it's 4-3-1, four, 4-2-1, one, one, 3 one only, then stretch 4-3-1. Now when you stretch the fourth finger out, Make sure your third finger plays that 14th fret. Then back to the first finger on the 12th. Then on the A string, you're playing just four, three, one, the rest of the way. Four, four, three, one. And that's regular four, three, one. Now 
what happens here, and the way the guitar is constructed, is that if you move up two frets from that and start on the 14th fret, this is pattern seven all over again. Uh, so if you have a guitar with a lot of frets that come up, like 24 frets, an electric guitar with a cutaway, you can reach up in here. And that pattern seven that you played down here, which was one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, just two, four, one, two, four, that's exactly the next pattern that comes up here on the 14th fret. And all the patterns repeat themselves from then on. Once you get to the final pattern of the G major scale, I provide a diagram that gives you all of the other notes on the neck of the guitar so you can see how it looks on the entire neck. The bad news about music theory on the guitar is that we have to learn seven of these different patterns in order to learn one major scale. And there are 12 different possible major scales. The good news is that all of the major scales for the guitar use exactly the same shapes, exactly the same patterns. They come in exactly the same order. You just shift them up on the neck or back on the neck to be in the new key. Now in the major method book, uh, book one, I deal with all of these scales, uh, the major scale, the pentatonic scale, the blues scale, the harmonic minor scale, the melodic minor scale, the whole tone, and the diminished. Uh, almost all of them, except the whole tone and diminished, can be relayed back to this major scale. By only changing one note here or there, you end up with all of these other scales. So learning the major scale entirely and very, very thoroughly is really important because then it's a short, short step over to get to these other scales.